number, are we on number four? I think we're on number books. four. Everybody wants them. They all say they have them. Nobody has enough time to build them. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so um, I'd say, you know, I'm going to be honest with everyone here. I would love to have a playbook for each one of my functions leading RevOps. It is like literally, I will get there someday. I will work in an organization where we finish the marketing playbook, the sales playbook, the CS playbook. Until then, there's pieces of them built and we call them living documents. I'm willing to bet most organizations are feeling or feeling the same way. So when you go through due diligence, you're, you're ultimately given what they've learned. They've learned what their sales motion is, their go-to-market motion, where their ICP is. More than not, that is maybe a half-truth of what reality is, close to it. So really, again, it goes back to most things that we're talking about, but assess it out for yourself. Figure out what does that new playbook look like and start there. And you know, having playbooks, having frameworks, for me, that's the way my brain works. I've learned I can move faster. It doesn't mean that the frameworks I use, I can force into every organization. So there's different flavors of it. There's a change management framework. If you don't have one, get one. <laughs> Hire someone that can help you with that framework. And then you have your integration plan and you have to figure out these different go-to-market motions. So start understanding the change aspect of it and teach others. If you have a larger scale integration team and each one is taking a function, whoever is involved in the change aspect, make sure they're sitting at the same seat or virtually in the same Zoom room um, with those leaders and play devil's advocate. Have we thought about this? Have we thought about that? Um, and build those playbooks. So for me, I think it allows the confidence in the team to know what direction we're heading. And again, as we get into the systems and the data integration, it allows us to make better decisions and quicker decisions on what we're going to give, merge, buy, or then ultimately rip out of the org and the timelines around. It. So don't force it into one, just organically figure out what works for the business. Um, i trying to think if there was any other, any other tidbits that we've learned about the playbook. I mean, it all goes back to the customer journey, right? Yeah, I think that's key. Really, I think there's an, enough, and I've seen the, the attendee list. We got a good audience here. They could probably teach me a thing or two about the customer journey, but you have what you are and you have what you acquired, figure out those points of commonality. And then where there isn't anything defined, spend the time and, and figure out what works best. Yeah, those playbooks um, become really helpful, particularly if, if part of the strategy for your company is growth through acquisition. It's really important not to be reinventing the wheel every single time. And it brings, like you said, it's sort of a level of uh, a comp both confidence and speed, I think, to the team to know, uh, hey, here's how, you know, here's how we do things, right? Here's the, here's the things that we need to be thinking about and asking about and making decisions around and having some of those frameworks um, so helpful to to moving the process forward more quickly. Um, but I, I love what you said about flexibility, right? Like every every acquired company is gonna look a little different, right? And the um, you know, the the attributes of that company will will help define what specific steps to be taken. But a playbook certainly does help kind of streamline the process, smooth the process process. Yeah, it you know, in my experience, it helps normalize the language we use. Yeah. Um, and also depending on where you are in your business, you may be acquiring different departments at different skill levels, capabilities. And, and so again, there's a, it, it's a blended family you're trying to, to create. And if you don't normalize the language and the definitions of how you refer to things, um, there could be a lot of assumptions. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, 